You may not be where you wanted to be, but this cry is taken the hand of the Lord to come this far. He has taken the hand of the Lord to do what you can be able to do today.
nini kwa yote umetenda Shukuru wapi sadaka yako ya vigelegele na makofi kwa Yesu wapi vigelegele na makofi kwa Yesu Amen Hallelujah It's the first day of November Are you happy Are you happy to be in the presence of God Amen Na tunataka tukumwambia tukumwambia tunamwambia asante na shukrani zetu kwa kutulinda kutokea January hadi sasa Amen Are you ready Wapi vigele gele kwa Yesu we Oh, niseme nini baba Niseme nini baba Niseme nini baba Kwa yote na shukuru Niseme nini baba Niseme nini baba Nikikufananisha na yoyote wezi kufana na mungu wangu Niseme nini baba, dote na shukuru we Niseme nini baba, baba ya mbe Niseme nini baba, wayote na shukuru Vile we ni bembeleza, nikiwa na shida mungu wangu Niseme nini yote, nasema asante Niseme nini baba, nasema kwa Wote wana kutukuza bwana Ye bwana Ye Watu wote wana sisi Wote hova mungu wangu we Wewe wapeke na wamilele Watu wote wana kusiku we Ye hova mungu wangu Wewe ni wapeke na wamilele Watu wote wana sisi
Amen. Sasa nimetambua kwamba kweli kuna Mungu mmoja. Mungu wa Ah ah ah. Ah ah ah. Ah ah ah. Ah ah ah. Sasa nimetambua kwamba kweli kuna Mungu mmoja. Mungu wa Ibrahimu, Mungu wa Isaka, Mungu wa Yakobo, Baba wa mimi. Pokea utukufu, pokea heshima, pokea uweza, muumba wa yote. Lift your hands. Lord, this is the 11th month of this year we align our lives our thoughts our plans to your will we refuse to go through the year or through the month without a cause we refuse to ride through time without consciousness we assign our thoughts our plans we command every day every hour every minute every second of this new month to be aligned to the purposes of God for us. We decree in the 11th month there will be no bad news. There will be no wastage. There will be no destruction. There will be no reverse. It's going to be a month where every day will count. Every hour will count. Every month minute and every second will count. The Lord is giving acceleration. That which was not realized in the 10 months. The 11 month is giving an open door. We decree together this month is blessed for our good. And if you believe it, say yes or amen. 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 Hey man, help me turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I, welcome you I welcome you into the 11th month, into the 11th month. Which, is your month which is your month of acceleration. Of acceleration. And I am, I am your witness in Jesus' name. Okay, slap them and tell them I am a witness. Amen. Karibu Kitty, God bless you. Karibu Kitty, you are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Occupy every space, please. Ashes. Na ashes, mujua hapa ni kwenu. Muko na haki ya kuambia mutu wa songe. Hapa si kwao, hapa ni kwenu. Nindio muko na mamlaka. Are we blessed today? Are we enjoying grace in the man of God? Songa tu ndio ashes wa sikusumbwe. Najua unasa songesho iaribu neema. You know, are we enjoying grace? Are we enjoying pastor Pancras? Kwe tunasema Pancras. So are we ready for Pastor Pangras? Yes, let's put our hands together. <laughs> and bring Pastor Pangras. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you so much, Bishop. Let me ask you, is truly this a month of acceleration for this ministry? Mom usually receives my devotional. Do you know, that is the same word that I actually sent for people concerning the month of November. The month of acceleration. Exact one. So that's a confirmation that there are many things that will happen. I was actually really laughing because indeed then God is actually doing it. Thank you so much, Bishop. Thank you so much, Mom. God bless you to all the leadership and all the pastors. I honor all of you. May the Lord bless you. Thank you consistently uh, for having received me. Allow me today just to rush through into the word. Again, we are back in Genesis chapter 3. And we are continuing on with the journey that we actually began uh, looking at the aspect of activated hearing. Now, we already established that there are four dimensions that are actually made available in this particular scripture. And we dealt with the first one. We may not have finished everything, but we dealt with the aspect of hearing. We proceeded and also dealt with the aspect of uh, uh, the voice of God being progressive by nature. And today I want just to go ahead and to also speak about the voice of God existing in a garden. Is that okay? Somebody shout aloud, Amen. The word garden in the Bible, if you study it, has two main meanings. The first one is symbolic of the presence of God. Symbolic of God's presence. The second one, it's actually symbolic not only of the presence of God, but also symbolic of man's 
place of assignment man's place of assignment so if you look at genesis chapter number two you will discover from verses number seven when god created man and breathed into man in verse eight god took the man whom he formed and he put him in a garden verse number eight the lord god planted a garden eastward in eden in fact i've written a book on, uh, called the mystery of the garden so he took a, the garden eastward in eden the word eden there uh, means a spot of his presence uh, or if we would go deeper, it also means a place where God's presence is strongly concentrated. Are you following me here? Now, the original Hebrew meaning is simply delightsome. It means delightsome. But when you look at it in context, it basically brings a suggestion that where there is delight, where there is pleasure, where there is joy is where the presence of God actually exists. All of us agree, according to Psalms chapter number 16, the Bible says in the presence of the Lord there is what? Talk to me. There is what again? So when God took the garden, he planted it in Eden. So that means there was a garden. Yet again, there was Eden. The two of them are two different entities. If you hear me say, I hear you. So originally, we shouldn't really be calling it the garden of Eden. We need to call it the garden in Eden. Because it was planted eastward in Eden. Now, some theologians suggest that what exactly needed to happen is that as the man known as uh, Adam would have exercised himself together with the wife in terms of their dominion, then they would have spread their influence from the eastward part to the westward, all the way to the southern and also to the northern. So there were other places where this garden needed to spread. But it didn't spread because of the sin of man that was committed in Genesis chapter number 3. But what I wanted to pick up here is that the word Eden is a suggestion of God's presence. So when we are looking at the word garden there and connecting it with Eden, what we are saying is that we are talking of God's presence. Now let me explain this in continuation. Remember we are dealing with activated hearing and majoring on the aspect of hearing God. Anytime a person wants to really hear God, he must locate God's presence. Okay, in John chapter Jonah chapter number one, uh, the Bible gives us a story of God appearing to Jonah and God commanding Jonah to give a word to Nineveh concerning the judgment that he will bring. The Bible says, I should be around verse two or verse three there, verse number three, that Jonah ran away from the presence of God. Okay, he tells us that Jonah fled and where did he flee? He fled to Tashis from God's presence. So, now you must understand the moment he did so, God became quiet. So, if you can constantly stay in God's presence, then you have certain advantages that work on your behalf. Are you hearing me? But now, I will come back to that. So, let me go to the second part, then build it, returning back to the first one. So, we've said, number one, the word garden is the place where God's presence is. So, now remember what we are then suggesting uh, is to hear God, you must locate his presence. Number two, second thing that you have to understand is that the word garden is a placement of your assignment. It's a place where you're called uh, to activate or to fulfill your assignment. So, Genesis 2 and verse 8, it says, back, back there, 2 and verse 8, and the Lord God planted a garden and eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Verse number 15. So he took the man whom he had formed and put him in the garden. In verse 15, look at what he says. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to do what? And so there was an assignment. When you are in the garden, your work is to ensure you dress it and you also keep it. Remember, in the same garden were trees that were pleasant to the eyes. And they had food that was satisfactory to the stomach. Are you following me here? So what God was suggesting uh, is that Adam had put you here to exercise yourself in the assignment I have placed in you. So let me begin on this one. Then we will come to the aspect of God's presence. Is that okay? Now, if you will hear God, you must be in the right location. The best location you can be in is the location of your assignment. So you can be able to write this down and it will be able to help you. Life is general. I've always said this. Life is general. But destiny is specific. I want to repeat that again. Life is general, but destiny is specific. Now, the dealings of God do not appear in the generality of life. The dealings of God will only appear to men in the specifics of life. When God really wants to deal with you, he will always deal with you based on the specific instruction he had given to you. So when we look at Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, God told him, come out of your father's house, out of your kindred, and out of your country. And I will show you a land. The opportunity, or let me change my statement, the obedience Abraham gave is what started a journey that, I mean, is what God was able to initiate a journey with Abraham with. Now, for God to speak to you, you must 
must be in the right location. Anytime you are in the wrong location, you miss out on God's voice. In 1 Samuel chapter number 3, we see an account that the Bible gives us of a prophet Samuel when he was very young. From verse number 1, let's read this, chapter number 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3, not chapter 31. It says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was what? It's on the screen. The word of the Lord was what? Precious in those days, and there was no what? So that means that that word, NIV says it was rare. All right? That God wasn't consistently speaking at that particular time. And the core reason was because the sons of Eli were in sin and God took a back seat. So when the word was rare or precious and there was no open vision, you know, there are dimensions of visions. When there was no open vision, God was keeping quiet. But God decided to start talking. So look at verse number two. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid in his... If you have your Bible, underline that. In his... So where was his place? The Bible says, and his eyes began to wax dim, and he could not see. Where was the place of Eli? He was in his house. Eli was in his house. So as long as Eli was in his house, what happened to him? His eyes began to be dim. If you are in the wrong location, the voice of death is what will visit you. Everything about your life will begin to die one by one. You prosper when you are in the right place. You excel when you're in the right place. Even if you go through warfare, as long as you're rightly located, you cannot die. You will always have a preserving ability working on you to keep you alive until you accomplish your destiny. All right? Are you hearing me here? Uh, now, we are coming back to First Samuel because that's where I want to be. But I just felt to add this scripture. In Acts 18 and verse number 10, we see a man called Paul. Acts 18 and verse 10. And we see him about to give up. He was preaching in a city called Corinth. So when he was about to give up, God appears to him in a dream. And he says this to him. For I am with you and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. Now Paul wanted to give up. Paul decided, I'm no longer going to continue preaching here. I don't feel like there's any grace manifesting. But the reason why he had to stay is because God had to appear to him to confirm to him that I am with you right here. And in this same city where you're thinking everyone is against you, I have many people for you. That's part of the reason why you shouldn't allow closed doors to be the determinant of your decisions. The fact that you have many closed doors doesn't exactly mean that God has forsaken you or where you are is not a progressive area. Because in the same area, there are also many doors that exist. Let, let me break it down this way. For every level, there is a devil. All right? So we are aware of that. Uh, that if you move higher, the air grows thinner. Come on, somebody talk to me. So for every level, there is a devil. There will be warfare the higher you go. But at the same time, you must understand that for every level, there are numerous angels made available. God makes available helpers the higher you go. He increases them. In Daniel chapter number 10, when Daniel began to pray because of a vision that God told him, the scripture records very clearly that at that time he became weary. After 21 days of sticking God, an angel appears, I think around verse 13 to verse 18. And the angel tells him, from the day number one, you began to seek the Father. I was released to bring an answer. Now you must understand there are pastors who preach about the 21 day fasting through Daniel. Daniel never intentionally planned for 21 days. It wasn't intentional. I need an amen right here. It was circumstantial. The answer came on the 21st day. That's part of the reason why anyone that will ever discourage you not to repeat the same prayer point is a liar. It is only vain repetition that is wrong. Notice the word vain. But repetition is in order. Amen. Jesus repeated the same prayer point for over three hours. If it be your will. If it be your will. If it be your will. Elijah repeated the same prayer point for seven hours. So it is never wrong. Even if it takes ten years. If God hasn't answered, stay there. Amen. I said if God has not answered, stay right there. Amen. I need a better amen right here. So Daniel persisted on the 21st day the angel appears. Now the angel tells him, from day number one I was released. But the prince of Pasha hindered me. Alright, are you following me? But when you are praying, I'm paraphrasing, uh, angel Michael was released to come and fight the prince of Pasha. So that means the higher you go, the more the Lord is able to release more angels on your behalf. So you must never just be conscious 
of the negative battles that things are becoming too bad that there's too much warfare learn to also be too conscious of the fact that there's an increase of the helpers around you or you need to shout a better amen right here have a consciousness that's why god told paul i have many people in this city for you you may not be aware but in this same city there are doors of progress on your behalf i'm just taking a sideline to already prophesy to somebody here in this same city there is a door of progress on your behalf are you hearing what i'm saying your bible says in deuteronomy 28 that when the enemy it explains that as long as he comes through one way God says, I'm paraphrasing, after I will have finished with him, he will live in seven ways. The suggestion of that scripture is that the one way he came to attack you through, by the time God is dealt with him, he will create seven other doors on your behalf. Amen. You'll get it tomorrow. Uh, you will get it tomorrow. Tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, no problem. You will get it tomorrow. You will get it tomorrow. <laughs> I, I hope you're getting what I'm saying. So God talks to Paul in the place he has given him an assignment. So let's go back to 1 Samuel because we are establishing the importance of locating your place of assignment. That's why you should not jump to every church. Not every pastor has your word. The Bible says they continued in the apostles doctrine. The word apostle doct apostles doctrine, my, some of my people are here, is basically to me, I taught them this. It means the word that God has given the sent man over your head. They start what God lays on the head of Bishop Bitok and Mam Bitok. And when God puts it there, that is a word you continue with. Thank God for Joshua Selman. Thank God for Apostle Ar Arome. Thank God for Pancras. Thank God for every other. But the diet that is yours is the one he gave the set man right here. But if you are a church hopper, you can't hear God. You can never hear God in every church. There is a place God ordained for you to hear his voice. All of you may know this woman of God, Funke Adejumo. She's very known. She gives a story of her own sister who was a personal assistant. And how the sister really honored her, served her with all her heart. But a time came that all of a sudden, something very strange took place. That after this lady got married and which Pastor Funke and her husband made sure that everything went well. Immediately after the wedding, you know definitely in Africa, we will count years. So, year number one, we are saying, Apo Aji, enjoy. But year number two, we want to see manifestation. There must be a revealment of our labors. Are you understanding me? So by the time they don't see a baby, they are questioning. In Nigeria, it's a bit more radical. The third year, now we have to question. For, uh, no, we have to intervene. Fifth year, now we don't just add prayer and fasting. We get Holy Ghost acid and we apply. Are you understanding me? So the lady was not getting pregnant. So one day, uh, Pastor Funke became agitated. He went, be, she went before God and told God, God, how comes you are not answering? The Bible is clear. Whoever serves you, you will not allow barrenness to be given to them. And so when she cried to God, God spoke to her and told her, go and ask your sister the last time she attended choir practice. And she called. When she called, the lady answered and said, Mom, I got discouraged. And some months now, I decided I will not go. I decided to take a back seat because I was feeling embarrassed attending other people's baby showers. <laughs> Are you hearing me? <laughs> and my own miracle is not occurring. And the moment when she was conversing with her, the Holy Spirit spoke to her. That's Pasafunke again. And the Holy Spirit told her, that is why she hasn't gotten a miracle. Pasafunke, you know there's a way I can talk to you, but I'm talking to God. Pasafunke asked God on her insight, what do you mean? Then the Lord answered, I've been sending angels during choir practice with babies, but every time they arrive on that address, they don't meet her for the past three months. So every time you have an intelligence of missing lunch hour, and probably God had a word for you that day, your miracle just bypassed you. It just bypassed you. That's why I'm repeating again. The story goes that the lady decided to go back. And when she went back in one month after that period, she conceived. And barrenness was broken. Right place matters. Right place matters. There is always a place God delights to talk to you. So we are back in first Samuel. Then I will explain. We are going to verse number three. And then I want you to observe this so that you can begin to locate your right area. If God called you to ministry and you're forcing too much into business, you will never hear him. And I'm not saying doing business is wrong. Any intelligent person will tell you that it is good to operate in all streams of your ability. Are you understanding me? If God called you in a particular area and you're always missing it, that voice will never come to you. He says, an error, the lamp of God went out. Look at that. In the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. And what happened? Samuel laid down to, where was Samuel? In the temple. 
he was right there look at verse number four so we continue and the lord did what come on talk to me and the lord did what so samuel had god because he was in the right place as long as you are in the right place, his voice will be clear. Away from the right location, his voice will never come to you. Eli began to wax dim. He was losing the virtues of hearing the voice of God simply because he was in the wrong location. There are many believers that have always seen simply dying. They attend the wrong churches and they are wondering why things are becoming worse. Why they are no longer sensing God. Why they are no longer at, at least having the right dreams. Things are moving from bad to worse. It's not that Satan is just attacking you. It's possible that you are in the wrong location you are only covered in the place that god had appointed for you to be in away from that place god cannot give you a defense no you need to give me a better amen right here and i came here with a mandate to return people to their right location I came here with a mandate to command you go back to your place of assignment. I came here to encourage somebody no matter what happened, stay in that place God ordained for you to stay. If you receive it, shout a louder amen right here. Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue with First Samuel, but I want you to think through with me. Look at the book of Ephesians chapter number 6. Look at verse 12 and listen to what it says here. Paul talks about the armor of God in verses number 12. I mean verse number, 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 number 12. He talks about powers, principalities, and how we wrestle with them. But look at verses number 13. Are you with me? If you hear me shout, I hear you. Shout it like you're in church. Shout again, I hear you. Look at verse 13. He says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to do what? Withstand in the evil day. Then look at the conclusion. And after having done all, to do what? He does not tell you after having put on the armor, go out to war. He tells you that the battle is a battle of location. So the greatest battle in your life is to dislocate you from your original position. If you can stand in the right place, no matter whether seasons change, you will automatically at the end of the day generate the right result. You are already in prosperity. You are already in healing. You are already in health. Let no one ever convince you that you have to look for Waombezi. Are you understanding me? Prophets who go ahead and have wakugusu watuwe tumufupa waseme ni antiyako ametupia uchawi. The reason is because you are moving from your ordained place. Listen, your pastor has the anointing for your healing. I know you may not have seen him heal the sick and autajiambia kwamba labda ni benihina pastor Chris, those are the healers but believe me, healing is not just a gift, it is a grace healing happens in an environment that people are able to receive of God that is part of the reason why any church that receives a man of God and the word God gives him, because you can receive your man but you have not received his word you can celebrate your pastor but you are not really taking the word he's preaching so you don't change you are the same yesterday today and forevermore are you understanding me same habits same character bado muongo na kukwa church unaimba unasav lakini wendo bado unalala hata injili inaendelea bado ya church unaenda na bado unalala na wanake it means you received the man but you never received what exactly put in him I want you to tap your neighbor, ask your neighbor, what are you receiving? Let them give you an answer. Don't be in a hurry. Yeah? Because that neighbor might be a suspect. Turn to the other one again and ask him, what are you really receiving? <laughs> yeah. Don't be telling us we are good teachers and good preachers. That is not what we want. Celebrate us, we appreciate. But the gift you give us is your willingness to transform through the word we make available. It says that they say they honor me. Are you hearing me? With their mouths, but their hearts are far. It is far. Honor is not only when you lift your hands. Honor is an aspect of willingness to respond to whatever you are learning. Ladies and gentlemen, we are called to respond to God. I need a better amen. The same first Samuel, back there again. Verse number 20 and verse 21. The last verse somewhere there. First Samuel chapter number 3 again. The last verse. Look at how God deals with Samuel. That's why I recall you to your place. Come back to ministry if you have to come back to. Come back to your place of service if you have to come back to. Stop telling us you are discouraged. You no longer want to serve. Come back. That is where God will keep on speaking clearly. God is an assignment giver. God is a God who gives direction. God did not create you without a purpose. You are not meant to actually make a living. That is not why God created you. He didn't create you to work to pay bills. That is not why you are alive. That I am working on Ikwena Unga. That is a bad mindset. He can take care of you even without a salary. There are people that don't work that live better than people that have salary. 
So who told you a salary is the end of the result? Be in the right. Oh my God, I'm already feeling like shouting. Are you hearing me? I said, be in the right place. And there will be an alignment of all things. He says, and all Israel from Dan even to Bathsheba, verse 20, knew that Samuel was established. So God is about to establish somebody. When you shout amen, the miracle is breaking through. I said, God is about to establish somebody. I said, God is about to establish some People will know that God is lifting you. Anyone that ever laughed at you, they will see the hand of God over your life. We are in the first day of the month of November. I want to declare to somebody, the world will know the Lord will establish you. I said, the world will know the Lord will establish you. He will establish his word over your life. They have had prophecies over your head. And they have asked the question, where is your God? They are about to witness your God from the 1st of November. Establishing you in this very city. If you believe it, you need to shout a louder amen right here. He says they all knew. But the foundation of establishment. Verse number 21. Look at verse 21. And the Lord appeared again. In Shiloh. And for the Lord revealed himself. To Samuel in Shiloh. By the word of the Lord. So it was only in Shiloh that God appeared. There is that place. If God gave you a place of prayer. He said it is 3 o'clock in the morning. And you are intelligent enough to push him at 5. You will never hear him. If your watch is 3. And you force yourself with your sleepiosis nature. To wake up at 5. You will never hear God. Every place God puts you, he has a preferred way of speaking to you. And so sometimes God would call you to midnight prayers. That's why you don't sleep a lot. It's not that you have anxiety problems. No. It's a spirit of watching on you. That's why sleep can't come on you early. You sleep at around 2 o'clock. So what you need to do is stop trying to say, Nikona Gonja, just wake up. Go and shika raba ruler, actually a pencil, shika or salmon. Are you understanding me? Go and release some fire. And you don't have to pray because you feel like praying. Just start it. Crack it, Mosanda. You just start some Moseka. Now talkies can come back. I was singing his balloon. Amka. Rokonda. Lakaria. Unaskeona boeka. Unatafta biblia ukiomba. Rikanda la baria. And let me tell you, as you obey what God is releasing to you, He will begin to speak to you. I said he will begin to speak to you. So you have to master to go to this man called Samuel. It was in Shiloh God preferred. It was there. It was there. Some of you can testify of miracles that happened ever since this lunch hour was established here. This is your Shiloh. This is your Shiloh. Has, you know what we were discussing? Yes, oh my God, we've had good fellowship with your pastor. And so while we were discussing, I told him one reason I constantly celebrate what is happening here is that there's no gimmicks. There's no oil sent, sold. Are you understanding me? Me, I've had people that come to me because I also sometimes move on the deliverance aspect or prophetic aspect. So I've had people sometimes come to my office and this is what they're expecting. After I've talked to them, they're expecting me to sell oil. And I always, yes, I've had many people come to my office. I hear them, I cancel them. I make a simple prayer and I tell them God with you and I give them counsel. Then I, they, they look at me like, isn't there something else? You know, like maybe Utlete, Look at what God is doing here. Is there any drama? No drama. Even without laying hands on you, many of you come here and miracles are happening. <laughs> miracles are happening. Uh -uh, no, let's agree. It's a sure testimony. Look at your business. See how it's expanding. Look at your marriage. See how it's expanding. So who told you it has to be a man of God from India to prophesy over your head? It's already working in the right place. This is your Shiloh. It's your Shiloh. Oh, come on. Somebody needs to talk to me right here. To Samuel, the preferred place was in Shiloh. And that's the question I will ask you. Where is your preferred place? What time does God want to do business with you? I'm talking to you and you need to give me feedback. What moments are those moments that God wants to speak to you? Some of you, the preference of God for you is dreams. You may not hear an audible voice or a sm st small still voice. God just likes to talk to you in dreams. Some of you may not be dreams, it might be visions. You always see things flashing in your, in your mind. And then all of a sudden, you tell me, I saw this thing three days ago. Because God preferred, the only issue is you are not mastering what he prefers to bring into your life. 
So you have an idea that it has to be after you have lectured him for two hours that they taught you that after you finish praying, keep quiet. Then wait. You lectured God for two hours. Then you're waiting for him to speak for five minutes. Prayer is not monologue. It is dialogue. So sometimes you are not aware that every time you're saying, Oh Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. God began to throw things in your head. Ideas. You should have written them down at that time. Every time you're saying, Mosa Kataka, a scripture came. You should have taken note of it. That was God speaking to you. You didn't need to finish two hours. Then close your eyes. And then wait. And then after he never spoke, you say, God didn't speak today. He did. You didn't master his preferred will. Some of you, even by the time you wake up, God just prefers talking to you through songs. A song is in your heart. That was the word he was speaking to you. So you always have this idea that it must be my son. My, and they, no, 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 no. I have not made it well. My son, my son. You, you have that mindset. My daughter, my daughter. It, it, who said God has a base? Who told you God has to talk like a Barry White? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That is a lie. God can literally, by the time you're waking up to pray, that time you have all these prayer items, you just feel God is telling you, pray for so and so. He gave you a word. By the time you finish, if you call that person, the person will tell you, my friend, thank you for praying for me. So God was still speaking to your head. I want to challenge you. Learn to locate that area. And I came here because by the end of this week, I've been praying, Lord, bring people back to that place. Because that is a place where his presence is. No other place. Some of you, God says, I need you to put your phone away. Separate time this week. There are discussions I want us to have before 2024. Your problem is you have an addiction on social media. So every time God is about to have a business with you, you keep on missing out on him. 1997. I remember I was together with my friends. All of us are men of God. Though we were not pastors then, but we were all ministers in our own right. And we were having a discussion with in Parklands at that time in Nairobi and I was still together with my parents and we had a friend called Eric Ibuga. He also lived in Parklands. So all of us went there together with uh, our overseer, Apostle Ken Owino. He was then just Ken Owino and we all gathered together. We were fellowshipping. I mean, we are talking of fellowships where people talk about how angels appear to them. People are talking about certain revelations and mysteries. Heavy fellowship. But while we were there, I had a tugging in my spirit. Get out. I want to talk to you. Remember, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be. But I kept on hearing attack. Get out. I want to talk to you. I excused myself from the brethren. I told them, please allow me to go. I remember I went straight home. Walked into the bedroom like this. By the time I closed the door, a cloud appeared and hit me. And I fell down. And a voice spoke to me. That is when I received my calling to ministry. Now, if I did not respond to the timing that God had given me, separate yourself. I would have been looking for him to confirm things which he had already wanted to do if only I responded to be in the right place. I call you back to the right place. I said again, I call you back to the right place. Whatever separates you from the place God has ordained you to be, I lift up a wall against it today. Every power, and allow me to declare, that is ever trying to distract you and push you away from your light location. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I rebuke it right now. I command it to come to an end now. I command you to return back to where God ordained you to be. Back to your place of prayer. Back to your place of purpose. Back to your place of calling. I command your feet to be ordered back to where you ought to be. Return in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, you need to shout a loud amen right here. Tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, return, return, return. Look at the other one. Give them a high five. Tell them again, neighbor, return. Turn to another one. Tell them again, neighbor, return. You know how well before you ever grew to become mature, when you were young, there was a way God used to deal with you. And he would tell you, I want you to have these moments with me. Those are things you have to understand. Greatness is not just natural. It's intentional. You have to come to a place whereby you respond to God. I pray again, may your feet return back. I don't hear your amen. I say again, I pray, may your feet return back. I've not had your amen. I say again, I pray, may your feet return back now in the name of Jesus. Believe me, all you have been praying is in the right location.
The miracle you have been waiting on God for is in the right location. When Peter had toiled the whole night and had caught nothing, he was in the right place. Luke chapter 5. Because it was in that same area that the Lord Jesus appears. And he tells him, give him my, give me your boat. And Peter without argument surrenders a boat to Jesus and allows him to preach. The preacher man delivers a sermon, then turns to this fisherman and tells him, cast your nets into the deep. Any fisherman will tell you, you never fish during the day because when the fish see the nets they will begin to run away so you fish at night when you suspend lantern on top of the waters the fish is attracted to the lights and without knowing there is a trap of a net that is already organized but here is a master who is already walked in the location whether it is time or not time when he comes in a time will align the master looks at him and tells him cast Peter looks at him as Peter of the Ambo he tells him Lord you know very well I've told the whole night nevertheless at your word I will cast my nets Peter casts the nets and receives a net breaking miracle I don't care how bad it has been I don't care how the night has been toilsome I know January may have been difficult but if you're in the right location one word from the master can usher you to a season of a harvest that will wipe away ears of tears you need to shout yes right here you need to shout a louder yes right here that's why i come with a war cry i say you are returning back to that place it is there you will encounter his voice it is there that there is an instruction for your next level it is there that he will lead you into your place of breakthrough ladies and gentlemen the man isaiah never competed with jeremiah because the two of them though in the same timeline operated in different graces oh i thought i had a name right here the man ezekiel never competed with nahum though they were in the same timeline though in different nations one in northern israel and the other one in judah though they were there they knew this is our area that's why foolish people begin to call themselves major prophets major doesn't mean you're the big boy stupidity the word major prophets in the bible in simple interpretation means volume of books it doesn't mean big prophet major one eh? that's a bit of we need to call ourselves major amen Nowadays, it's even general prophet. Hey, God punish the devil. And then you are following all this major. So, who is minor amongst us? Ask your neighbor, are you minor? The way you are quiet. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Turn to the other one. Ask your neighbor, are you major or minor? Which one are you? <laughs> Foolishness in people. Believers who don't understand scripture. The word minor prophet meant one who wrote small volumes of prophecy. Not that he was a small boy, because in his right, he commanded something. The man Amos says, I was only a farmer. When God called me, I wasn't any way a priest. I never came from the priestly background. But while I was a farmer, the Lord appeared. And he called. God can separate you from any area. I stretch my hand over your head. You are coming back in the name of Jesus. I said, you are coming back in the name of Jesus. I conclude by declaring that not only does God bring you back to the right place, because in the right place he speaks, but also in his presence he speaks for three reasons. Number one, why the presence of God is critical is number one, it arouses or sensitizes your spirit. Your spirit man grows more sensitive in God's presence. Why is it important to have praise and worship before the word? Is it just a church tradition? No. He says, for the spirit of heaviness, he will grant the garments of praise. A depressed and a discouraged person cannot hear God. God knew it when he was meeting Elijah in 1 Kings 19. Elijah told God, I am tired. Kill me. I've had enough. God decided I will not talk to him. Give him food. Let him eat. Because when somebody is depressed, just encourage him by feeding him. And walk away. Then immediately after 40 days of walking, that is when God speaks. You can't hear God. When your spirit is low. So one reason you have to learn to play worship when you're driving. Oh, I thought I had an amen. Worship when you're in your house. One reason why even when you're seated in church, when the word is going on, you pray in tongues. And be careful even the type of person you're seated next to because there are people who carry death. They don't carry life. You pray in the Holy Ghost. It's like yawning. But if you are next to a person who when the man of God is preaching, they are rukosata. 
They are activated. Oh, God, dear. I, I feel like shouting. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? I always watch Pastor Chris or Ekelome and I see the miracles. The miracles are not just because he's a man of God. See the expectation on the people. Some sit on the chair like they are ready to just jump on the man of God. So they are ready. That's why the man of God comes. Pastor, uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Benikin was saying, I've watched your healing schools. I see how you come out and command the sick people to come. He says healing school is healing. We are focused on healing. We don't teach. We don't need worship. We only come. So Pastor Benikin began to joke. He says, no, hallelujah, no nothing. Why? Because the people, the way they came, they were ready to be healed. Not trial. So believe me, how you are positioned will determine whether the miracle will come. That's why I refuse. It cannot go to my neighbor. It has to land on me. It can. Oh, I wish I had an amen right here. There has to be a way that you constantly create an atmosphere. You wake up in the morning, you may have been discouraged. You never felt a breakthrough. But throughout the day, Mosondalaka. Because the atmosphere of God quickens your spirit to hear him. A depressed man cannot hear God. A discouraged person cannot hear God. For the spirit of a heaviness, he will grant you the garment of praise. A mind that just thinks of rent and food cannot hear God. Because all it wants is food. The problem is food you will consume, it will pass out. I wish I had an amen right here. Rent you will pass, another man will appear. Here. but one word from God can clear every thought of rent permanently so you don't need money for a miracle you need a word from God so I'm sensitive I've watched your man of God sometimes God moves him in compassion he says we are going to bless one so and I can tell some people are praying sometimes it's not that you just need one word a word clears all the rent a word, you don't need because I can give you 20,000 today it will finish but I can give you a word it will sort out 20 years of your life clear your children that's why you fight when you are in a church like this one you don't allow confusion to come on you you don't bite your nails you don't eat your hair you don't sleep you are in the tongues of the holy ghost in his presence my spirit comes alive this is where some of you will hear a voice where god will tell you i want to make a covenant with you in this church i want to raise you as a millionaire in your bloodline so people are wondering why you're shouting amen it's not just because a preacher is preaching a word dropped in your ear while the word was going on god told you i want a covenant with you his presence activates i break every heaviness every hardness i have an assignment i break it off of you may it leave you today may it leave you today every spell of depression i command it to leave you today from today as you will live here an atmosphere will come on here a fresh atmosphere i say a fresh atmosphere will come on here you will have new joy you will have a new song i thought i had 10 radical amens right here you will have a new praise in your mouth i declare that the lord will give you the oil of joy for morning he will give you the oil of joy every time you ever cried receive joy receive the oil of joy receive it in the mighty name of jesus i decree in the name of jesus strange visitations that come over your life at night to always dampen your spirit may that spirit leave you tonight as you will live out of here carry an atmosphere that will challenge every demonic power in your life today that the voice of god will be clear receive an atmosphere oh i wish i had allowed a hallelujah receive an atmosphere i bind the heaviness i bind every spiritual depression i bind stress in your mind i cast down wicked imagination i command every thought exalted itself against the knowledge of god fight in your destiny by the word of the lord in my mouth i pull it down today and i release your mind to discern the voice of god i release you oh i wish i had people to receive here today i release your mind to receive and to discern the voice of god no more heaviness receive a fresh atmosphere somebody lift up your hands and just begin to pray in the holy ghost there's an atmosphere coming on somebody here there's an atmosphere there's an atmosphere coming on somebody right here i don't know how desperate you are hannah prayed and broke something 
that when Eli prophesied, the word broke through. I want you to open your mouth radically. Every weariness rolls out of my spirit. Lord, give me your presence. Lord, give me your presence. Lord, give me your presence. All I want is you. All I need is you. Somebody pray until the atmosphere shifts. I'm about to conclude here. Open your mouth. There's something God is doing here. Lift up your hands. Don't put down your hands. And if you can stand up, don't sit down. I want you to open your mouth and raise up a prayer. Yes, thank you, Holy Ghost. There are things that are leaving people here. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bind every spell of sickness, spirits of infirmity. I come against you. Leave the people of God. Lift them in the name of Jesus. Spells of suicide. Spells of depression. Get out. Get out. Get out. I command a new presence. A fresh presence. A renewed glory right here. That opens our spirit man. Come on. I need somebody to pray. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Don't close your mouth. Shalimandalakaria. Rotetetebe. Labratonima shandalaba. Somebody is getting revived here. Somebody is getting revived here. Somebody's prayer life is coming again. Somebody's prayer life is coming again. Shinabakandalabakaria. Somebody's joy is returning. Somebody's praise. Come on, receive it, receive it, receive it. The glory of God is here. The glory of God is here. Shadamakandalabakaria. Come on, give me two more minutes. Lift your hands wherever you are. Shadamakandalaba. They are angels of war. Angels of war in this house. God is restoring visions. People have lost their visions. I sense a restoration. Receive the restoration of your vision. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Lift up those hands. I know I've exceeded a little, but I just feel there's some work God is doing here. Open your mouth just for a while. Just begin to give thanks. You will sense something lifting. Something lifting. You will sense a renewal. I feel a blanket on me. Oh, glory, glory. Come on, I don't know how hungry you are. But stage yourself for his dimension. Come on, come on, come on. One more minute, one more minute. Press in that atmosphere. Press in that atmosphere. That's where his voice is. God's power is already here. My friend, I'm telling you, it's just that it's lunch hour, but I feel the power of God in this house. Herbo Shandalabaka. Endalabakaria Maprotolokote. Hey! Whoa! Yes! Yes! Somebody's recovering something. Elabo Shandalabaka. You have no rival. You have no equal, and now and forever, God, you reign. Come on, somebody declare it. And yours is the king. Let me hear you. Yours is the glory. Yours is. Come on, above all. You have no rival. You have. Come on, declare today. You have. God is doing war on behalf of somebody here. Forever, God, you. Come on, help me. Yours is a kingdom. Yours is. Yours is a glory. Yours is the name. Name above. One more time, you have no rival. You have no Go ahead and tell me you have no We say when for the God Your is a kingdom. We 
say yours is we declare and say yours is the name above all what a powerful name what a powerful name it is. come on what we need to go ahead and worship this god the name christ what a powerful name nothing nothing what a powerful name come on one more time take it higher yeah, what a powerful what a powerful name what a powerful Give a shout to the Lord if you don't mind. Come on, let's give it to the Lord if you don't mind. Open your mouth, let everything around you participate. Hallelujah. Amen. Is that something? On Sunday evening, I had a conversation with a bishop friend. And he said he was driving from Western Kenya. And somewhere on the highway, he heard the voice of God saying something. But the voice was in his mother tongue. He heard it in Luya. So he was with his driver. So he told the driver to reduce the volume of the radio. And please, he told the driver, don't talk to me. He took his phone and began to echo those words recording on his phone in his mother tongue. And he said, I didn't want to miss that moment. So he took the words like he had in Luya and speak it to his phone, recorded. So when he came back, when he got back home, he noted those words down. And we were fellowshipping, and I realized God speaks. One of the greatest victories in your spiritual walk is to make sure you locate the right position and stand. I realized that's one of the greatest fights we go through. Everything that must bear fruit must settle, must be planted. Jesus said, that which belongs to the house, never leave. He says, abide. There is something about warfare in relation to location. Jacob said, I now realize this is the gateway. Not there, not there, right here. And he said, wherever I go, I will come back here. This is where my heavens open. My, my instructions as we transit into the new month involve everything around you. Before the end of this week, let your finances participate in this prophetic transaction. So get a gift in the course of today and tomorrow and Friday. This is very direct. As you, you trust God for financial breakthrough, make sure your finances are part of this. Number two, those of you, our children are back from school. Some of the teenagers, if they are back from school, bring them to lunch hour. They, they are not young. They are not young. They are not young. If your children are home and they are from high school teenagers, bring them to lunch hour. You will save yourself some trouble. Amen. So between now and Friday, make sure you involve your resources in this transition. Tonight we have our breaking camp service here. Please join us for our Wednesday breaking camp service. Are, are we growing in this lunch hour? Yes. Is it worth coming? Yes. Are we enjoying this grace of... Uh, you, you know, God is interesting. He compensates some things with some things. Yes. You look at this body and you hear the voice. Then you realize God compensated the body with, um, with volume. You, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's why you never have everything. You know, if you are too beautiful, you never have some smarts. You, you know... Uh, what was I saying? <laughs> lunch hour. Come to lunch hour tomorrow. Come for breaking camp today. If you are a young man, we have a retreat for you. And please, I know the benefits of those retreats because we've done it for the last 14 years. They work. Amen. So register out there 
and uh, on Friday night we're going to slip out of town and then we'll be there for Saturday and then come back. Even if you're working on Saturday, you can go for the overnight and then come. I hope the books of the preacher are, are gone. If they are not, please pick those books and, um, and, and carry them with you. Kama una pesa shika kitabu ya mubiri kuja unione, ni kuambia vile utachukua bure. So just go pick a book there. Let's buy those books. Are we blessed? Hey, are we, are we blessed? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Package your offerings. Let's bless it. Chukwa sadaka. Ebu, msaidia muambia jirani yako wewe ni nani sa hii? Aa, sija sema muulize, nimesema muambia. Muambia wewe ni nani on this account from what you've heard. Who do you think you are now? Waja kusema mbarikiwa yu tumesema maramingi. Muambia jirani yako what you've heard today. Never miss location. Let me tell you. Shetani asipo kutumia watu, mtu atakusumbua, atakutumia mtu ya kukutoa. And then you keep hearing God is where you are. Chukwa sadaka. Kama una sadaka mwambia jirani yako, ndia maana mungu alikuleta karibu na mimi. Sasa shida ni kama njini wote wawili muko na the same problem. Amen. Lord, we are blessed today. Lift your offerings, lift your phone if you're using. Those who are watching us live, participate in our giving. Every instruction I've given comes to you too. I want you to send an offering. Say this is as this month is a month of acceleration. I want to involve my resources. Those who are watching us now and those who are catching up later, participate. Our pay bill is right under under your 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 your, your that, that screen of yours and i'm sure god is going to do something lord with our giving today we sign up to acceleration and most of us today have that desire in our hearts that this remaining month of the year they need to be an acceleration in our area of resources we connect that word to the principle of the scriptures today and the prophetic word has been declared let the month of the 11 month of this year be according to the word that has been spoken. All our steps on what and how we should do it. And as we go out of this place after this afternoon, we are blessed. And as we come back tonight for the breaking come service, our hearts are blessed. Tomorrow we are blessed. And I pray that each one of us will come with a testimony in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you.